I'm going to tell you about this game, but if you were here or watched it on TV, you know there's a lot more than three points that could be made. First point for you, discipline. The Hamilton Tiger Cats tonight had 13 penalties for, for 100 yards, 105 was the exact total. A lot of them came in spots where they didn't really need to take penalties. There was three or four in a row where they actually took them and it was just kind of, you know, jumping offside, down by the goal line, saving themselves some room with their heels up against the goal line, but they still took them. They still had some issues and our point number two in this three-point conversion has to deal with some of the bad penalties they took that were kind of unreasonable, unreasonable to be able to deal with. Jeff Tisdale and Dominique Ellis were signed at the end of the preseason going into the regular season. Dominique Ellis has been a special teamer, he's a backup boundary halfback, he's not having to play a whole lot. Jeff Tisdale is the starting corner for this team and he's an older guy, he's got to be able to run, he's got to be athletic enough to run with top flight receivers in this league like Sean Gore, the BC Lions. And tonight was the worst night he's had in quite some time in a CFL uniform based on what I've seen. He took two unnecessary roughness penalties. One was a face mask, the other was a horse collar tackle. The horse collar tackle actually came on a play where he got beat over the top by Sean Gore. It's not easy to be able to see a guy like that trying to run next to Sean Gore and think, yeah, he can lock down everybody in this league. It's what they have at this point though. They had so many injuries. DeMond Washington was supposed to play that cornerback position. You were supposed to have guys over the last three years that could fill in for Delvin Bro at that spot and they just haven't been able to. Delvin Bro was here at the game tonight and it really did make you realize that might be a big void in this defense and I mean does it change the way that Courtney Steven looks at his responsibilities if he knows that his corner can't necessarily stay back regardless of what the coverage is especially cover zero where they're all manned up maybe Courtney Steven starts to cheat a lot that kind of pulls and tugs on your defense in different ways that don't usually turn out in positives we'll see what happens moving forward but a rough night for Jeff Tisdale <laughs> Last one for you in this three-point conversion, the chink in the armor. Last week, 27 of 37, 318 yards, hadn't thrown an interception, had two, three touchdowns, had a great preseason, had an amazing playoff run for the Tiger Cats. Jeremiah Masoli struggled tonight, and everybody saw it. It was not pretty to be able to watch. It looked like he wasn't really setting his feet that well in the pocket. He was constantly looking down at where he could possibly scramble out to instead of keeping his eyes downfield. It was a much different defense that he was playing against. Adam Big Hill, I thought, was fantastic this evening. Solomon Elamimian was great as well. Mike Eaton patrolling the back end. You really have to start thinking that this BC Lions defense might be better than we originally thought when we saw them on paper in the preseason and the first week of the season. I mean, they've, they've balled out. They've played as well as anybody in this league, in my opinion, defensively. Now, where they go from here in terms of the quarterback situation with the Tiger Cats, put the pitchforks away. Jeremiah Masoli is your starting quarterback until Zach Kalaros comes back. Jeff Matthews did not play well enough in the preseason to be able to take that role. Jake Waters is not ready to take that role. Everett Golson has been here for a week. Corey Harris is on the six-game injured list. It's just not going to happen. He is the best option, and he plays at a very high level when he's effective. It's just the ebbs and the flows that are a little bit difficult. Tonight, his statistics aren't actually that bad. 26 of 39, ends up with 248 yards. It's just, it's two interceptions. One of them is in garbage time, who cares? One of them was a meaningful interception that was disappointing to everybody that was in attendance. But you start to think about what he really excels at. I think if you're the Tiger Cats, as much as you don't want to have CJ Gable not in the backfield, Jeremiah Masoli excels when you go into an empty backfield set, when you go three by three with your receivers, or you go four by two, or you go five by one. Every time you spread the field and you challenge teams and you basically make them play touch football, Jeremiah Masoli is great. I would expect to see more of that moving forward when Thursday evening, the Tiger Cats will again have a home game. They're last for five weeks as well, so you want to be at this one against the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Of course, I've got the call for you on TSN 1150 Hamilton, and uh, maybe the score won't turn out like this. 28 to three is your final. BC Lions hand the Hamilton Tiger Cats their first loss of the season and move them to one and one. For TSN 1150 and TSN 1150.ca, I'm Marshall Ferguson.